Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see low carbon steel, its properties, significance, and limitations. We have all these courses available on our Thinkific platform. To learn more about these courses, register with the link given in the description. Great. In that, where we are right now is ferrous carbon steel and in that low carbon medium and high carbon that is what we are going to talk about okay what is the temperature range for our low carbon steel as minus 45 to 370 380 okay that is what is the temperature range low and intermediate we call okay now the first one low carbon steel so the carbon percentage is 0 0.05 to maximum 0.3 that can be slightly you know variation like 0 0.31 you no know, that is possible 0 0.32 but not more than that okay carbon is the main alloying element and what is the property which is influenced by the carbon if we have more carbon what will happen how carbon influences the property of material anybody can tell brittleness high hardness we'll talk about two things what is the advantage what is the disadvantage so let us first talk about advantage strength strength yes yes so carbon increases the strength please remember that okay so it's not like it's always bad to have a carbon but uh, having that in right amount is what is important okay so in it increases strength but also increases the hardness of material okay it makes the steel non-weldable because it will crack after welding if it is too hard if it is too brittle okay it will it will move from a very ductile to brittleness when we keep on increasing the carbon percentage okay so the good part is we're having that in right amount so that we get the strength and also we are able to weld it that is the category which we call as low carbon steel okay hope it is making sense guys okay now let us talk about few properties of low carbon steel the carbon range we have already discussed between 0.05 to 0.3 okay apart from that there are lots of different alloying elements okay so guys what manganese how manganese contributes anyone can tell me how like carbon you said you know it, it increases your strength and also the hardness what about manganese Ako Beto is saying toughness great what about others how manganese help whether it helps or it's impurity toughness okay see manganese the first advantage of having manganese is that it eats your oxygen it deoxidized your steel do you remember if we study sa 516 grade 70 specification the steel should be killed killing means what killing means removing the oxygen manganese helps in that okay uda is also very right it increases the machinability okay the third point is that it increases the hardenability now what is hardenability so once you heat treat it the thickness of the material the depth of that material uh, which will be hardened through that heat treatment that is the hardenability like the depth if if we are able to harden up to very high depth the hardenability is good okay so that is what is the second advantage it increases the hardenability okay great that's more uh, you're not going to we are not going to become <laughs> metallurgy metallurgist but uh, just uh, you know for fun we discussed that about manganese 
uh, what about phosphorus anyone whether it is a desired element added or its impurity first of all so nikhil is saying it's uh, it decreases corrosion lines it's imp sachin is saying impurity sachin is absolutely right that's a impurity see iron we have extracted from ore okay so we keep on refining and phosphorus and also the sulfur okay it's always good if they are bare minimum okay because they are impurities they will always come with steel so our process of steel making is to remove them okay so phosphorus and sulfur are impurities what about silicon silicon is also a deoxidizing like manganese it, it kills oxygen and second increases the strength kills oxygen increases strength that is the silicon okay copper is also very much required copper improves the corrosion resistance okay so atmospheric corrosion you can very much because we know that copper is very good corrosion resistant element so uh, adding copper will increase your steel corrosion resistant okay so that is uh, you don't have to remember all that just for brief we discussed we don't have to just what you have to remember is the carbon percentage which is 0.05 to 0.3 okay that is the only thing which we have to remember okay so this is the low carbon steel and the significance or advantage we can say is ease of fabrication okay and that is the weldability for forming operations we can perform very easily the cost is low cost is low does not mean that uh, it's low grade material the cost is low because it's most widely used so produced in very bulk used in bulk and that is the reason the cost is low okay it can be found very easily so that is the reason of having low cost okay widely used contributes to the low cost okay uses we already seen that at low and intermediate temperature this will be the most preferred material okay limitation we already saw that low carbon still is limited at high temperature because of creep okay so creep is what it's a continuous increase in the deformation you know, any slight uh, if deformation is there it will keep on increasing with the same load even the load is not increasing it will keep on propagating okay and the failure will happen so this phenomena is actually creep generally it happens at high temperature more than 37338 yep. so this is the limiting factor for carbon steel at higher temperature for lower temperature it is the impact okay the brittleness it loses its ductility so that limits it uses for very low temperature below minus 45 okay. i hope you understood this part stay tuned for more videos related to materials requirements